Are you tired of your renders looking unrealistic? Well, let's talk about how you can take your render from looking like this to looking like this, all with the power of compositing. Before we get started, I just want to say a massive thank you to all my Patreon and YouTube members. If you are interested in supporting the channel or checking out some of the amazing perks I offer, I'll have links down below for those. Also for today, I'll be providing a link with all of the files that I use, including the 3D file for this scene uh, with the Coke bottle, because I'm not going to be going over that. Uh, you can see in this scene, we basically have a Coke bottle in my 3D scene with a camera track footage, and I'm basically just rendering out a set of passes for this uh, for use in compositing. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump into to uh, Blender and open up a new folder. So let's go to new general. Of course, I'm gonna go to compositing. So let's uh, hit use notes. And of course, let's delete the render layers notes since we're not gonna be dealing anything with the CGI. Again, I'll have a link for all of those files down below if you do wanna follow along or play around or you know mess around with the entire scene. So let's go ahead and import in everything. So for first, I need to import in my footage. So let's do that. Okay, so after my footage, let's shift D. I'm just gonna duplicate that down and now we need my CGI pass. Okay, so you can see it's an image sequence as well. So let's open that up. Um, now, of course, we do need to uh, go ahead and combine those. So let's add a alpha over and plug those inside of here. And then of course, um, if you do have the Node Wrangler add-on installed, so edit preferences add-ons, type in Node Wrangler. And just make sure this is checked. And now if we hold shift and control and then click, we can add a viewer node. Uh, so the first thing I notice is that we have the wrong color space. So let's change it to standard. Uh, and the next thing I notice is that we actually have a white border around our CGI. And that's actually to do with the alpha and the pre-multiplication. Basically, we need to apply this black and white mask to our CGI uh, just for use in compositing. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to add in a alpha convert node. And that basically just, uh, you know, will pre-multiply our mask onto uh, the CGI. And the nice thing about having it as a node is now before this is where we can do all of our color, um, you know, color transformation and stuff like that. Uh, now, the next thing I want to do is let's go ahead and import in a mask uh, to actually key out this uh, skyline right here. Now, there are plenty of ways to do mask inside of visual effects. There is actually a way to do it inside of Blender, which is coming up here, plus VFX and masking. Go to the masking section. Um, I highly recommend that you guys find another way to do it because uh, Blender masking and rotoscoping inside of Blender is such a massive headache. And so what I did uh, to actually go ahead and get a mask is to go inside of Nuke and then, you know, get uh, some rotoscoping tools and stuff inside of there. I know uh, After Effects is also a great way to, uh, you know, get mask and all that stuff. I'm not going to be going over how I actually got the mask uh, since that would take me forever to actually uh, go over that. But of course, there are plenty of masking tutorials out there. Uh, if you did download the files, I have provided the mask I use so you guys can still work along with me. Uh, so let's go ahead and import that in. So I'm going to go to Movie Clip and open that up. Okay, so here's my mess. Let's open that up. And now you can see it's basically just a black and white image uh, that has uh, some of the city actually keyed out. And so let's go ahead and apply that. I'm going to plug the image into the factor here. And now you can see it is flipped. So we do need to invert everything. I'm going to add an invert color node. And there we go. So that is looking much more natural now. Uh, now the next thing I want to go and do is uh, color the bottle to match. So let's go ahead and add a color balance node is uh, my favorite node to do. Uh, coloring inside of Blender. So let's go ahead and increase the lift. And basically I just want to uh, brighten this up a little bit because uh, the further away objects are from the camera, the more atmosphere and you know more desaturated it's gonna look. So let's go ahead and do that. And that is looking pretty good. Uh, so next thing, of course, for this specific scene is we have to talk about some reflections because we have this huge uh, body of water here. And so, of course, that would be reflecting. You can see it's already reflecting some of the city. So we need to try to match it as much as possible. Uh, so what I can do is let's go ahead. I'm going to duplicate my alpha over over here and then let's go ahead and plug that here. And then I want to plug a duplicate of my alpha convert into here. So basically we have uh, two of our cans being combined on top of each other. So let's go ahead and I want to flip that over. So of course uh, reflections are flipped. Uh, so we need to go ahead and flip that. So I'm going to flip on the Y. And so let's view our alpha over. And so now you can see that we have a uh, result like this, uh, that down here. Of course, reflections are super blurry. So let's go ahead and blur that a little bit and put that right here. I'm just gonna increase that blur or something like that. We can always change around with that later. Uh, but now you can see we're having a problem where basically we have our reflections, but it's going over top of the city and also not giving a uh, realistic result. And so the first thing I notice is that, of course, we do have to kind of mask out this area right here. And so how I'm going to do that, if I'm looking at this shot, um, I would probably, instead of doing a alpha over node, I'd probably do a screen, um, you know, mix. 
So let's go ahead and I'm going to delete that. Let's uh, add a mix color node. So mix color, place that there. And you can basically use this as a alpha over node. So with the same node setup. And instead of mix, I'm going to set it to screen because screen is basically uh, the way to only key out the um, you know, brighter areas and only leave the darker areas. Uh, so now you can see that's giving us a uh, fairly good result. However, we can still see some of the city up here. And so this is where uh, specifically for this shot, again, this is kind of a by shot by shot uh, basis. But specifically for this shot, I do notice that uh, the lake and everything is actually much darker than the uh, points around it. So what we can actually use is a luminance key. In other circumstances, you could also use chroma keys, uh, anything like that. So with this luminance key, what I'm going to do is plug the image into uh, the luminance key. I'm just using the base footage like that. Uh, and then now let's plug the mat into the factor of our screen. And so with that, you can see that now we're basically getting the result that we want where we have um, our reflection going down here. So let's uh, kind of dial that in a little bit more. So I'm going to uh, bring the high down just to lift that a little bit. And we can play around with the low. We don't want to do it too much. Uh, but yeah, something like that is looking pretty, pretty good. So uh, now you can see we actually have some of our reflection into our scene and it's giving us a cool result like that. And so one thing I do notice real quick is that our can is super sharp and super in focus uh, compared to the city. So we need to go ahead and match that. Uh, and so to do that, let's uh, try to organize some stuff over here. Uh, so this is my reflection down here. Uh, so what I need to do is go ahead and after this alpha convert, let's add a blur node just to blur that a little bit. I'll do like a two pixel blur. Um, you just want to kind of zoom in as much as possible. I'm just holding alt V to zoom in uh, to, you know, make sure that that matches the uh, focus levels and it roughly does. Uh, so that, that is what I'm going to stick with. Another thing that I noticed is our mask is super, super sharp. Uh, you can see that it's uh, really sharp and stuff, and it's also a little bit gray. So what I might do, first of all, is let's go ahead and add a color ramp. And I just want to make sure that these are uh, straight black and white. So let's just bring the white down. Now you can see uh, we, the blacks are actually much blacker and the whites are uh, much whiter. Uh, so that is looking good. I don't know why that um, happened, but, but that's just a super easy fix. Uh, so next, after this mat, of course, we want to add another blur. Uh, I love blurs in this uh, tutorial today. Uh, and so with that, I probably just want like a one pixel blur. And so all that is acting as a um, kind of feather for our thing. So let's see what that is doing. So now you can see our edges are much, uh, you know, more feathered. I might actually try a two. We'll see that. And so that is giving us a much kind of, you know, better result. So we don't see the edge of a skyline. And so you might see in some areas there, we can actually see uh, some of the blue skies starting to bleed black back. So what I actually might do before I actually blur my mask, uh, what I'm going to do is add a road uh, dilate and a road node. And so what that'll do is if I go ahead and turn it up a little bit is it'll basically just erode uh, and make our mask a little bit bigger. So let's see if that is uh, working. So before is this and then after is that. So you can see it's basically just uh, making our mask a little bit bigger and giving us uh, some control there. So that looks good. The final thing that I kind of want to do to make this a lot more realistic is to add some atmospheric elements back in. Uh, you can see that we have all these clouds and all this atmosphere up here. However, uh, we don't have any of that on top of our actual can. So let's go ahead and get that back. What I'm going to do is we'll bring a alpha over back over here uh, after our screen node. And I want to use the footage for this. So we'll put the footage on the bottom socket of our alpha over um, just so it's on top of everything. And then, of course, we do need to key out uh, some of these elements. Now, for our specific footage, uh, we're going to be using a luminance key again. I know we're using a lot of luminance keys, uh, but that is because these white clouds uh, have a higher luminance value than the uh, background. And so that's how we can get uh, get away with a luminance key. So I'm just going to add that back in here. Going to plug the mat into the alpha over factor. And then, of course, we need to use our footage again right here. Uh, and so now you can see we basically have this result. Of course, we need to dial that in with our high and low. So let's put that there. And then, of course, we need to bring our low up as well. Uh, so now you can see we're basically getting uh, this as our mat, just getting some of those clouds and data back into this uh, just to help us uh, add some atmosphere back on top of everything. Uh, now, some final things that I want to do to actually, uh, you know, make this shot a little bit more interesting is I want to go ahead and add some lens distortion and stuff. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. So let's come down here. I like to add in a uh, lens 
Distortion node. Uh, this is becoming my new favorite node, uh, and so I highly recommend that you guys uh, check this out and uh, give it a shot. Uh, but let's go ahead and add that in. So let's. Uh, I'm gonna make the distortion. So the distortion, of course, is basically the lens distortion. Uh, I believe I usually stick to like a negative 0.01. Uh, and so as you can see, that's basically just bulging out the uh, kind of outside a little bit uh, just to kind of match uh, what actual real life lenses do. And so I like uh, more of a uh, lens distortion effect, but of course you can play around with that uh, yourself. Uh, now for the disparation, uh, the reason I love this note so much is it's basically a kind of, you know, cheating, um, you know, hacker's way to add uh, chromatic aberration uh, into Blender. And so it's not totally uh, accurate to uh, chromatic aberration stuff. However, it's giving us this result. And I think it's a, a pretty cool effect for kind of, you know, more stylized shots like this. Uh, so let's go ahead and add that in. I'll probably stick to a, like a 0.05. Uh, so as you can see, it's just, uh, you know, adding some more color depth and uh, chromatic aberration. Also, I think it's blurring uh, the edges as well. And so I think it just gives a cool result inside Blender, and that is what I'm going to be sticking with. Okay, so that is pretty much it. Let's go ahead and get out a final render. So I'm going to plug everything into my composite node. Then let's come over to the output properties. I do want to set the uh, right... Um, aspect ratio. So since it's vertical footage, I need to switch these numbers right here. And then it is in 24 FPS. So that is looking good. And then we can set the in keyframe, I believe is 289. So set that down here. And then of course, I do want to save it in a new location. Once you have selected where you want to save it, we can just come down here. Since it's going to render out so fast in our compositing tab, I'm just going to render out as a uh, MP4 file. So let's go ahead, MPEG4, and then set this to high quality. I'm going to leave it as to uh, H.264 is totally fine for me. And then once you have all of this, make sure you save and then let's render the animation. OK, so here is the final result that we got from this tutorial. Hopefully you guys were able to follow along or learned a thing or two on the way. Uh, you can see we got a uh, pretty realistic looking result with uh, the correct reflection, some atmosphere and all that. So hopefully this shows you the power of compositing. Now, I would say the next level, if you are interested in one upping this shot and learning some more uh, in your art journey is to actually go ahead and learn a dedicated compositing program. I highly recommend that you guys check out Nuke, which is my compositing program of choice. However, After Effects, DaVinci Resolve, uh, Natron, all those programs are great. Uh, jumping off points just because Blender is not that great at compositing. So I highly recommend you guys go check out some tutorials about that. Uh, but anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you in the next video.